uh, talk. Your talk really changed our thinking about energy and the system. Okay, let me ask you a simple question. You talk about copper growing uh, cycles, right? Looks so interesting. Any uh, guy commercialize this kind of system to generate hydrogen and, and oxygen from seawater? And the commercial uh, ACL is trying to do it, okay. Huh? So far, not available there, yet. There are many salt cycles. Okay? Uh -huh. There's one involving sulfur mm -hmm. and iodine, but yeah. it needs to get to higher temperatures. Yeah. So it needs a more uh, capable material. reactor. Right now, we're just talking about relatively mild temperatures. So that sulfur iodine cycle doesn't need any electricity input. Yeah. You can just do it thermally. Yeah. But it's uh, much more challenging for nuclear reactors. People are trying to build such reactors, advanced high temperature reactors. So those are all good ways to go. I'm, I just presented things that I think are within reach, okay, uh, relatively easily, but with big regulatory problems. Most regulators don't know what to do with fluid reactors. Other question? Yeah, please. Uh, that 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 uh, that heavy metals contaminate slope. That one year later, that's uh, that's uh, grass start to grow. That that is very uh, impressive. Uh, my question is that that grass is also uh, will be contaminated by these uh, uh, metals or less. Okay, yeah, not gra just so where it will kill them. Okay, so if you remove cadmium from rice, there will still be cadmium, but much less. So it will pass some threshold. One, one cannot think of, you know, uh, regulating any form of waste down to zero. That's impossible. It would be infinitely expensive. But below what is reasonably safe. Thank you. Other question? Another way to say this is many people think that uh, nuclear waste is unsafe at any level. Linear, no threshold. But that's like saying if you take a hundred aspirins, you'll probably die. So what if I take one aspirin a day for a hundred days? Then <laughs> they say, you will also die. This is clearly not true. There is a threshold, okay? So, so there's some threshold. We need to find what that threshold is. It's, it's not in zero radiation. Radiation is everywhere, okay? Yeah, Professor Ellis. Frank, thanks for sharing these interesting systems with us. Uh, has there been uh, much investigation about whether some of these are uh, amenable to catalysis that might change some of the chemistry you showed us? So you showed us mesitylene, for example, as a, a product that has different isomers. I mean, do those right. come out in, in some of the reaction conditions? Yes. Have you played with that? Yeah, so mesotylene is actually only 71% of the yield from that. Um, <coughs> the other percentage, however, also hydrocarbons, sure. so it's not bad, right. okay? They're not necessarily this very yeah, symmetric sure. molecule. Or you can tune the ratio. Yeah, you can uh, adjust those ratios. Also, when I talk about salt as an uh, interesting area for chemistry, it's like the following. Most of what we know about chemistry is based on solvents. Water as a solvent. Wash, right? We need to dissolve something, right? <laughs> It's water. But water is hard to get above 100 degrees. So the reaction rates are slow. That's okay for biology. It should be, otherwise you start burning. That's no good, okay? But it's not so good for industrial chemistry. Salts are things that can take us as liquid solvent to hundreds, even a thousand Celsius. And they have so many varieties, not just oh, uh, hydrogen plus oxygen. Anything from the left-hand side of the periodic table and roughly the right-hand side of the periodic table, that's what we mean by a salt. Because they're from the two opposite sides, they're actually very good catalysts because it's very hard to change them permanently. They'd rather be bound to each other than something in between, right? So that's why there's this very large unexplored area, that uh, molten salt. So the two themes, if you learned, uh, heard nothing else, is molten salts, are interesting things to look at, and carbon technology is interesting thing to look at. So if not, let's thank again Professor Shu.